I don't know if I'm already live or it's about to go live. Please let me know in the comments if you can see me okay, if you can hear me okay. I can see your messages here so far. Hello to Brianna from Cork, Ireland. We got Jeff from the UK, Samuel from Nicaragua, Joseph from Connecticut, Janine from South Africa. Very cool. Hello. <laughs> well, you guys, I am so excited to actually be doing a live stream exactly today, exactly where we are right now, because what I'm about to show you, I myself didn't see the first time I came to this area and it's absolutely stunning. So I'm excited that we've got a fairly nice sunny day. It's going to be a little bit windy probably. I'm going to try my best to kind of, you know, duck into places that aren't quite as windy, but it might be in the first part of the stream that there is a bit of wind since we literally are on a peninsula in a mountainous lake. So uh, excuse the wind if uh, that does come up in the first part here. All right. Glad you guys can see me and hear me all right. Hello to Jonas in Sweden. Hello to Dawn from Burlington, Ontario. We got Steve from North Carolina. We got Shannon from NYC. Amazing. Oh my goodness, Jim Ross, starting things off with $100, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you so much. Alina here is a small bit, a small bit, Jim, <laughs> of what was uh, being withheld by the powers that be. Hope that will pay for one or three of your minor feasts because a girl's got to eat. I'm now prepared to be amazed by what you'll show us. Well, thank you so much, Jim. That truly means so much. And um, yeah, for anybody who actually doesn't follow me on Instagram, I have had a bit of a mess the last couple of days where not only I had some fraudulent charges on my credit card, thankfully, you know, that part should get worked out. I should get my money back, but I basically had to cancel my main credit card. Um, and uh, I'm gonna have my mom bring me my new one when she comes to see me in Ukraine in about a month. But then, probably a bit worse is the fact that um, I had an error on this form that YouTube asks for if your country has a tax treaty with the US and if you don't they withhold 30% of your income. So Canada and US does but there was an error on mine that I didn't realize and they basically withheld $500 from me this month. And I've been back and forth with them and it doesn't look like I'm going to get it back. But apparently I can write it off or something like that. I'm still trying to f like figure out the details, but it's a bit of a punch in the gut. Because last month was like my best income month yet with like AdSense and stuff. And to have just like $500 of that, well not gone, but I've definitely lost money. Um, really sucks so uh I guess you just learn from your mistakes but um yeah that's what Jim was referring to so thank you so much Jim uh that's greatly appreciated all of your support you guys is greatly appreciated I'm not you know out of money it's just you know an unexpected sort of hit that I don't think is fair on YouTube's part because I feel like if your address shows you're from Canada and obviously you have a tax treaty then why does it matter if I didn't click this one box that I didn't click? So long story short, <laughs> that's that's been my last couple of days of like phone calls with people and trying to get things sorted. But uh, let's get to where we are right now, where let me just lower my camera. Uh, I'm not actually able to film right behind me because apparently that is the summer resident residence of the Armenian president and they don't allow filming there so 
even though they probably wouldn't know right away. I'm just going to film <laughs> this way from here. Uh, but before I do, thank you so much to Martin uh, for the super chat. Hi, Alina from Sweden. How are you? Uh, well, thank you so much, Martin. I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm uh, making it happen. Uh, very happy to be here with you guys. Uh, but yeah, let me flip the camera here and give you a view of Lake Savan, which is the uh, largest lake in Armenia. It's the main sort of body of water, and it's also the largest lake in the Caucasus region. Am I totally butchering that? But you know, this whole region of the world, basically. <laughs> so let me just flip the camera here. Look at that, you guys. This lake is absolutely huge. Like what I'm showing you right now really is the smallest portion of it. But what I love about today that wasn't here when I first got here is the clouds. I have never seen, you know, clouds down on a lake like this before, just because we are 2000 meters above sea level. Like this literally is a mountain lake. We are in the mountains. So that is why you see the clouds um, settling on the water. <laughs> never seen anything like that in my life before. I really hope that this is still here tomorrow because tomorrow I'm filming my main um, YouTube video of this area. Today's just the live stream. So I really hope that uh, this can kind of stay because I feel like I have never seen anything quite like it. So as I said before, uh, where we are right now is actually this sort of peninsula. It's called Savan Island. And uh, back in Soviet times, this was actually an island. It was through irrigation that um, the Soviet Union was kind of, you know, taking from this area that the water level dropped about 20% and it became a peninsula. So if you go all the way straight out here there is a road that kind of connects to the mainland but when you are up here it does really feel you know like you're on an island in the middle of this enormous lake it's just absolutely beautiful for anybody who watched my russia content is it me or is there some kind of semblance uh to lake baikal in Russia. Obviously, Lake Baikal is much, much bigger, <laughs> but uh, I feel like because there's the mountains and just the sort of width of the lake, there's definitely a certain kind of semblance between the two, at least in my mind. So uh, I do feel very fortunate to get to see such beauty. Uh, Jet Lag Warriors asks, can you swim on the lake? So yes, there is actually uh, a few beaches here. There's not a lot. Uh, it's not like, you know, Thailand sandy beaches. It's not like that. It's much shorter and um, not quite as fine of sand. But um, on this coastline here especially, uh, there's a lot of sort of resorts or kind of camping sort of areas. So it's in there that... Um, you can kind of go lay on the beach and there's like a lot of water sports. They rent out jet skis, boats, all that kind of stuff. I'm actually going to see if I can take you guys on a boat ride at the end of this live stream because I think that would be super cool, though I have no idea um, how much it costs. So actually any locals that have been to Savan, please let me know what is a fair price for a boat ride because I have... Uh, been ripped off actually a couple of times with a few people who were su selling souvenirs in this area and I, on I only found out afterwards. Uh, I feel like this is the first place in Armenia where somebody totally upsold me on something that shouldn't have cost so much. <laughs> but you know, you win some, you lose some. Uh, so yeah, any locals let me know what's a normal price for a boat ride. Let me just read some of your comments here. Oh, we got my mom in the chat here. Какая красота вокруг тебя. Привет, дорогая. Привет, мам. Thank you so much for coming out. So beautiful. Oh, interesting com comment from Charbel. Uh, but you guys, is the wind bad right now? Because if it is, I'm going to move more inward. So let me know. But um, 
to answer Charbel. Hey Alina, love the videos as I've been watching them for a couple of weeks now. Just wanted your general take on Armenia as my family and I are moving there soon from a currently terrible country. Oh wow, um, well, sorry you are going through that right now. But yeah, I would say that Armenia is actually quite a nice, you know, country. The people uh, are incredibly kind other than getting swindled here in Savannah. I haven't had any issues uh, with anybody, no safety concerns. Uh, Yerevan would definitely be, you know, the top spot to go if you wanted something more, you know, cosmopolitan, have the best work opportunities, because once you kind of go out of Yerevan, there's not really um, a lot of really populous cities. So uh, I would say that if you are a new immigrant to this country, Yerevan probably would be your best place to start with. But uh, I wish you all the best and hope, you know, that things work out. Uh, okay, good. Glad the wind is not so bad. Oh, I got my lovely friend here, Zhenya Malkhova from Tokyo. Privet, my friend. Thank you so much for coming out. Uh, speaking of Tokyo, is anybody watching the Olympics? Because I only watched a bit of the opening ceremony. Obviously, things are so different with uh, COVID going on this year. But in a way, I'm actually glad, you know, they went ahead with them because I think, you know, the athletes should, you know, have this opportunity <laughs> to live their dreams since it got canceled last year. So hopefully things will go as well as they can go in these crazy times. But thank you to my friend Zhenya for coming out. Oh, and is my dad out as well? <laughs> I got all the people out today. I didn't see his comment. But hello to my dad. Oh, yeah, there I see him. Gordy Magoo. Hi, Alina. <laughs> thank you for coming out. Oh, we got Jean from watching from Belisi. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming out. Fabulous. Yeah, it's so crazy. Um, that uh the world is in the state that it's in but i don't know about you guys but i feel like we are finally starting to see a sort of light at the end of the tunnel uh at least with the travel world i feel like a lot of restrictions are being lifted in the last couple of months even canada lockdown canada is opening its borders to vaccinated canadian or americans uh i guess at the end of the month or early August, sometime in there. And then a month afterwards, I guess, they're gonna try and open to any other vaccinated travelers worldwide. So it's good news. <laughs> it's good news after a very long time. Aw, thank you so much to Brianna. Check your PayPal account as I think you'll get a surprise soon. Large donations should go that route as they take a smaller chunk. Thank you so much, Brianna. That is so sweet of you. Thank you guys so much. I truly appreciate it. Um, I have no words for how amazing this community has been and especially in these crazy times. So thank you so much. I will check that PayPal uh, once I get off my live stream, but thank you so much, Brianna. That's incredibly sweet of you. Because yeah, unfortunately um, on these live streams, uh, as much as of course, like every dollar truly helps, but it sucks that YouTube takes 40% of my live stream income. So it is what it is. I've considered possibly switching to, you know, another platform that doesn't take as much money, but I feel like I'd have to build up, you know, the audience on that platform as well. And I just don't think, you know, that would be as many people as I have here on YouTube right now. But if you guys have any, you know, suggestions for other um, live streaming platforms that might be a good idea, let me know because that's, that's what I'm currently dealing with. Uh, but let me flip the camera here for you guys because look at this gorgeous view. That is the monastery that we will make our way to called Sevan Avank. <laughs> a little bit of a tongue twister sort of name, uh, but that's kind of the main sort of attraction on this island that we will get to in just a minute. But uh, this view is absolutely incredible. And just below us is actually a very interesting building from Soviet times. It's a bit dilapidated right now, but um, basically it was called like 
the writer's hotel or the writer's nook, something like that. It was uh, part of the Armenian Writers Society for a while, and uh, they turned it into a hotel afterwards, but now it's really, really, really run down, but it's a really interesting sort of shape, an interesting sort of building. So maybe at the end of the stream, I'll show you guys that as well. But uh, yeah, this is the eastern part of the island. And as you guys can see, there's like a gate over there. That's what I was talking about, where you're not allowed to film or like fly a drone or anything in this part, because I guess this is the summer residence of the president or something, and they don't like to have, you know, cameras or drones anywhere near there. But uh, yeah, beautiful Lake Savan, freshwater lake. Let's head on to the north part here, and I will take you guys to the monastery. Yeah, it's still a live stream, Shasta. Um, all right, let's see here. Somebody asked them to take my picture, but I'm just like, I'm in the middle of a live stream right now, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you so much to Christian. Hello from Toronto area. You inspire me. That is so sweet of you, Christian. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming out. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> a lot of you guys are commenting about the 40%. Yeah, I know. Well, that's the thing. It's like, that's why I put my PayPal. If anybody wants to, you know, donate directly, I definitely, you know, don't expect anything. Um, I, I feel incredibly, you know, supported by you guys. But of course, PayPal is like the one way that I can directly get um, any kind of donations with uh, YouTube. Uh, live streaming it is a higher percent patreon is a bit less patreon's only about 15 percent so you know it is what it is i'm obviously paying for using their platform which i greatly appreciate but i do feel like 40 percent is a bit much oh <laughs> hello to Veronika from ukrainian perspective youtube channel how are you lovely thank you for coming out Thank you so much to Frank Stewart from Texas. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, let me flip the camera here and we're gonna walk through this lovely trail to the monastery. And here there shouldn't be too much wind. It's nice and peaceful. There's this beautiful sort of carving and actually maybe any locals can point this out, but are these sorts of gravestones? That was kind of my understanding that these were originally used as gravestones, but maybe I misunderstood that. But you see these sorts of things um, all over the country, usually beside churches and they're just like intricately carved stone, but very beautiful onwards and just a mention for anybody who's thinking of coming to Savan uh, depending on what it is you kind of want to see and do here and how long you're staying here for I would either recommend staying at a resort right on the water um, if your main thing that you wanted to do was you know just see the lake every morning go to the beach that kind of stuff i'd recommend a resort but for me personally since i'm here for a whole week basically i'm staying in um let me flip here uh i'm staying in the actual city of Sevan, which is about 30 kilometers from here so i have to take you know a taxi to get here but uh, if you stay in Sevan, then you kind of have a bit more options of like restaurants grocery stores just you know the regular amenities of a smaller sort of city so depending on what it is you want to do here and how long you're staying i'd recommend either staying at a resort with a very good beach or staying right in Savon City. And there's a whole bunch of guest houses uh, like the one that I'm staying at where it's like 20, 
$25 a night, super inexpensive and really great sort of places. Um, but here we are at the monastery. Let me just flip the camera here. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, like I said before, uh, this is a monastery. There are two churches from the 9th century, though originally I had read that one of the main sorts of um, historical and religious figures in Armenia, uh, Gregory the Illuminator was his name. Uh, apparently he had built something here in about the 4th century, but it was completely, um, like, uh, it was... The word I'm thinking of is destructed. <laughs> That's not the word I mean, but you know, there was nothing left and then they rebuilt on this space in the 9th century. Uh, but what else is also interesting is that uh, this monastery, since it was an island at the time and kind of far away from anything, they actually exiled monks here. <laughs> like monks that were misbehaving themselves apparently uh, all went to this monastery and they had like very strict rules about uh, what was allowed in these parts. So that's another <laughs> interesting sort of uh, storyline to this monastery. I believe one is called um, the Church of the Apostles and then the other one is the Mother of God Church in the English sort of translation. Just reading your comments here, guys, while I give you this view. Yeah, the sky is absolutely beautiful here. I'm so glad that uh, we got such a nice day to do this on. And yeah, there are actually quite a few uh, people here. This is definitely the most probably the most popular tourist attraction in Armenia, obviously outside of people visiting Yerevan. Uh, Lake Savan is probably the next most common place that people go just because it is, you know, a super <laughs> beautiful location. And this really is the main place where Armenians will go, you know, to rest, for vacation, you know, get a little bit of beach weather because it is a landlocked country. We've got um, Turkey, Georgia, Azerbaijan, uh, Iran, all around Armenia. So they don't have access to, you know, the ocean or the sea or anything like that. So Lake Savan is kind of the main place uh, that people go to for vacation. Oh. A whole gang came out today. My very good friend Ryan Hildebrandt is here. How do you get to the island? So uh, you do have a road that they built now after Soviet times. I'll point to it just down there uh, that connects to like a main highway that goes all around the perimeter of the um, of the lake. And uh, Sevon City, as I was saying, where I'm staying is kind of just in that area. But like I said, it's about a 30 kilometer drive. So you do have to take a taxi. Though it's very strange with taxis actually here. They have Yandex, but I have yet to get any taxis off of Yandex. Every single time that I try and order one, nobody takes my call. So I thankfully found this one guy <laughs> that's been like my taxi driver and I just call him every time I need a ride uh, but the issue is that he's one of the few Armenian people that I've met that doesn't really speak Russian so uh, well he speaks like a little bit of Russian and stuff so that's how we've been like trying to communicate where I'll call him and I'll say like you know where I am and ask him how many minutes till he gets there and that's like the end of our conversation so I will say it's a little bit tricky with taxis here you kind of just either have to flag them down on the street or kind of you know find it your person <laughs> or have your hotel or you know a restaurant call one for you uh, so that's that's one thing I found a bit a bit challenging here at uh, Lake Savan 
Uh, Global Nico asks, hey Alina, loving your Armenia content. How high is the elevation there where you are right now? Thank you so much, Nico. Uh, yeah, so we're about 2000 meters above sea level. So I think in feet, I think that's about 6,000, something like that. Um, yeah, something like that. But yeah, we're very high up. That's why you can see all the clouds kind of around, you know, the lake and the mountains. I don't think I've ever been in many lakes that are this high up. So it's, it's pretty cool. Indian Mastif, are there any good translator apps that you could use? Yes, yeah, no, there's definitely, um, you know, translator apps once you're in person, but you know, when you're calling somebody, unless I guess, <coughs> excuse me, unless you write it down, that's when it gets a little bit tricky. But we've made it work. <laughs> uh, Hub of Truth by Michael. Michael, thank you for coming out. Are you able to use your drone anywhere there? So I'm hoping I'll be able to um, somewhere around the lake, but I had asked, can I you know, fly it around here? And the guard said, no, but I see other people in their Savon videos having gotten drone shots up here. So I don't know if I'm gonna be risky with it tomorrow, but um, at some point somewhere around the lake, I will definitely try and um, get some drone shots. Aw, thank you so much to Ravi. Very kind of you to say. Oh, Ryan also asked another good question. How much do you use English there? So yeah, I haven't really used, you know, much English because uh, Russian is just so widely spoken, but I was speaking to some other people that are staying in my guest house who are from Iran, who don't know Russian, but have been using English. And uh, <laughs> they were saying they've had some issues, but that's because they are going to, you know, some of the smaller sorts of places. They're really hitting all the different places in the country, even the smaller out of the way sort of places. So I feel like if you wanted to hit those smaller sorts of places, it probably would be a good idea to, you know, hire a tour guide or, you know, if you have a local friend or something to go with. But um, if you were okay with just going to the main sorts of places, like even here in Savan or Tatev or something like that, you probably will be fine with English. It's just if you want to, you know, really go off the beaten track that it is definitely going to be harder with just English. Aw, thank you so much to Alan. Your streams and videos are amazing. Thank you so much, Alan. That is so sweet of you to say. Thank you for coming out and thank you so much for supporting the channel. Oh my goodness. And we've got my lovely friend, uh, Shifa. <laughs> Hello, lovely. I am slightly late, but so glad I am wa uh, watching it now. This reminds me a bit of Lake Van in Eastern Turkey. Oh, thank you so much for coming out, lovely. Shifa is like, an amazing travel YouTuber. So if you guys aren't already subscribed to her, make sure you do. She currently has a series on Serbia where she took like a motorbike all over the country. But yes, there's definitely some similarity um, to Turkey here as well. And she did an amazing seri series on Turkey. So definitely check out my good friend Shifa. Thank you for coming out. Oh, we got Alex from Reporterfy Media, also another fabulous YouTube channel. Thank you so much for coming out, Alex. Greatly appreciated. Oh, and Shigeru, thank you so much. Hi, my friend Alina. Hope you have been comfy in Armenia. By the way, Tokyo Olympics seems to be okay, except super high temperature and humidity for players. Both Canadian and Ukrainian teams got two medals each. Oh, fabulous. Japan got six medals so far. Amazing. I, I honestly, as much as like, I love Canada, I love Ukraine, I love Russia, you know, all my heritage sort of countries, but I am rooting for Japan just because they're hosting it and in these crazy freaking times, especially. So Japan definitely has my <laughs> cheering <laughs> from Armenia, but thank you so much, Shigeru. Thank you so much for supporting me as always. I hope you're doing great and, uh, don't stay up too late because I know it's like midnight right now in uh, in Tokyo. Uh, 
Oh, thank you so much to Ukrainian perspective, Veronika. Спасибо большое, дорогая. Thank you so much. You guys are so sweet. Um, all right, guys. Let me just flip the camera to give you a view while I answer this question from Sneha. Hey, Alina, love your videos watching from India. What countries are you planning to visit next? Would you would love to see you show us Turkey, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Iran? I would love that as well. Uh, but the thing is, my mom actually has uh, some time off from work at the end of August, and she has been planning on going to Ukraine for that time. So I absolutely want to meet her whenever she's able to do that. So uh, I was originally going to go to Georgia after uh, Armenia, but uh, I think I am just going to have to leave it for another time and uh, go to Ukraine at the end of August. And if it doesn't get too cold, maybe I will go to Georgia in November. I don't know, can anybody actually suggest to me if that's a good idea? Should I just wait until the summer? Because that's definitely the best time to visit. Or is November still an okay time? Because I could make that happen as well. Let me give you guys a little show around the monastery here. There's some more of those like um, carvings, like the things that look like tombstones over here, I remember. So let's see if I can find them. enjoying it and have fun in Scotland. <laughs> That's another place I definitely would love to see. Oh no, I went too far. They're up there. <laughs> okay, I'm not climbing back up. <laughs> That's what I want to show you guys. Uh, but yeah, just more carvings and like, like I said, I think they're tombstones. I could be wrong, but they are beautiful. I think this part of the monastery, if I'm not mistaken, is the remnants of the original. Obviously, these have been built after the 9th century from my understanding, but I think this was the uh, original foundations of the monastery that they have decided to keep in here. SFC Paul Fowl. Thank you so much for the super chat. Alina just keeps supporting you. Thank you so much, Paul. That is greatly appreciated. Thank you for coming out. Hope you're having a good one. Let's see here. Fabulous. Yes. Oh, yes. That is correct, Indian Mastiff. Location reminds me of Okre. Do you remember you went to to get the pearl earrings, I think? Yes, definitely this place has uh, a certain sort of resemblance to Okre as well. Though Okre definitely isn't quite as high up in the mountains from what I remember. But also a very big blue lake. Let's go to the front here. Not allowed to film inside the churches, unfortunately. But uh, they are very beautiful, almost like cave churches in a way, if that gives you an idea. Actually, you know what's a uh, oh, whole crowd of people here. Super interesting thing that I was just researching this afternoon is that in the south of Armenia, there is some kind of like cave complex uh, that, you know, hundreds of years ago people actually lived in. It's in the very like southern tip of the country so since i'm going to be heading south in a few days i definitely want to make sure i uh visit that it's supposed to be like the cappadocia <laughs> similar to turkey of armenia and you're able to tour it so 
that is definitely going to be on my list as well before I go. Oh, thank you to Hazmik who said they are called uh, Hachkari. They are gravestones. Yes, that is the name that I was trying to remember because, yeah, they are gravestones. So good, I remembered that. Thomas Prince, wonder how many people fall over the edge taking pictures? I mean, I hope none. <laughs> that would be terrible. Jesus. But actually, I think that actually does happen uh, quite often in this day and age where people are so glued to their phones, me included. We have to be very careful to watch where we are stepping and where we are going. Oh, Robert says, you picked a good place to be today. We're boiling in Yerevan right now. Yeah, gosh, uh, Yerevan, I think, is like, what, at least plus 40 right now? Oh my god, <laughs> I could not handle that right now. Here, it's probably about plus 20, and in the evening, it dips down to, like, 15 or something like that. So, after the three months that I had in uh, Thailand, I don't mind at all <laughs> having to wear a sweater and pants for once. Very much appreciated. Aww. Thank you so much to Martin for the super chat. If you're at 2000 meters, can you feel the altitude or are you nicely acclimatized already? The views are unreal. Thank you so much, Martin. And yes, the views are absolutely incredible here, but you probably can hear me, you know, puffing a little bit more than usual because it is, it's not like, I've been up in the Himalayas in Nepal and that's where you can really feel it up uh, in your head, but here's just like a little bit tighter in your chest if you're like climbing up for quite a while. Uh, climbing the stairs to the monastery, I definitely felt it more. So, yeah, if you guys kind of see me huffing and puffing, it is actually the altitude. So, good, good point, Martin. And thank you so much for the super chat once again. Let's see here. Thank you, careful consumer. I do think I have great teeth. Thank you very much. <laughs> Adrian asks, are you able to live on $50 a day in Armenia? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, depending on what it is you want to do while you're here. And if it's you or other people, that would obviously change the question. But I would say if we're talking 50 US dollars, that's what my budget has basically been. Um, in the times that I've been here. Some days maybe I spend a little bit more than that, but for example, my um, guest house right now is 20 US dollars a night, so $30 left for like food and transit, uh, different kinds of attractions is definitely more than enough. But having said that, if you went to Yerevan, it would be a little bit more difficult because there the average like one bedroom apartment is going to be a minimum of like forty dollars so kind of depends where in armenia you are so as i answer alexey's question i'm just going to flip the camera here oh what the heck so Alexei asks, great experience and monasteries. What is the best time of year to visit Armenia? I would say that honestly, this might be one of the best times of the year, even though Yerevan would be like super, super hot because it is more, you know, in the central south part of the country where the, you know, elevation is lower. Um, it's going to be super hot there. So if you were going to spend a lot of time in Yerevan, then maybe sometime in the fall or late spring might be a little bit better a little bit cooler but uh from what i read i think summer is a great time to visit uh just because if you go up in the mountains you know it's going to be like 10 degrees cooler that's the church where we sadly can't go film in <laughs> just so you know um but yeah if you go up in the mountains keep in mind it's going to be like 10 degrees lower so if you go in the fall and it's like plus 20 in Yerevan, it's gonna be 10 in the mountains. So really depends where you're gonna be spending the majority of your time. Wow, we are really in the clouds. <laughs> this is crazy. 
It was like a bright blue empty sky the first time I came here, so all the clouds the way they are right now is totally new to me. <laughs> and yeah, Jim, after the last six months, it's like you're surrounded by hordes of people. It is weird, actually, to be honest. Like here in Armenia, especially in Yerevan, it has felt like tourist central, which, you know, after this past year of traveling the Balkans and after being in Phuket for three months, like this is definitely the most crowds that I have seen in a very long time. So let's head down here, head down the stairs. Still a fabulous view from here. There's a whole bunch of like souvenir stands all around this area as well. Uh, Ukraine dude asks, how much is admission? Uh, it's free. It's free here. You don't have to pay anything to go up to the monasteries. Usually I find that if it is like an actual religious complex, not like a museum, they don't usually you know, charge money for people to get in anywhere. So that is a nice sort of point. And see over here is... Uh, where uh, there's a bunch of like restaurants and stuff on the water. Ah, thank you so much to Godwin. Привет, Алина. Actually, I shouldn't do this when I'm walking. One second, guys. Let me just stop up here for somewhere. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop over here for a second. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Godwin. Your content and choreography are amazing. Are you going to be shooting in 4K again? Have a safe trip. Thank you so much, Godwin. Um, yeah, so I haven't actually shot a lot in 4K other than I had um, just a few like stock footage stuff that was in 4K that made it look like my whole video was in 4K. None of my videos have been totally in 4K yet. Not because the cameras I have can't shoot in it, but because my computer, which I feel is a fairly good laptop, uh, has a lot of issues if I try and do a whole 20 minute video in 4K, like it kind of, you know, buffers wrong and um, shuts down <laughs> unexpectedly. So um, I think I would have to upgrade my computer uh, before going completely 4K and I would need like a huge, um, you know, SSD or like external storage because the clips, you know, are even bigger file sizes then. So if I did do 4K, I would basically have to revamp all of my equipment. Um, but I feel like, you know, the cameras I have at 1080p are, you know, uh, fairly good for the time being. Usually people actually don't even notice a difference with 4K unless they're watching it on a TV. But uh, maybe at some point, I will switch to that. But thank you so much, Godwin. Much appreciated. All right, guys, let me flip here. See, we got just hordes of people coming. It's crazy. Jesus, even Granny's coming down here. Thank you so much, guys. I see the super chats. Just let me <laughs> get down the stairs here and I will answer them. Let's see here. Thank you so much to Katsu. Hi, Alina. Greetings from Tokyo. 
Thank you so much for coming out, Katsu. I hope you're having a great day and go Tokyo, go Japan for the Olympics. Thank you so much for your support as always. And to Veronika, Spasiva, thank you so much. Thank you for the inspiration, Alinushka. You are the kind of girl I tell my subs about. A rare gem, you do exist. Well, thank you so much, lovely. I really do appreciate it. And like I said, guys, definitely check out Veronika's channel for anybody interested in uh, Ukrainian culture. That actually, you know, will be my next country. So you guys can learn from the both of us what Ukraine is really like. <laughs> All right, we still got more stairs, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Daryl just said in me a huge super chat here. Oh my goodness. Just wait till I'm at the bottom. Daryl. Thank you so much, as always. That is so incredibly kind of you. YouTube preset max, lol. <laughs> thank you so much. I can't even begin to thank you for the support that you have given my channel. So I hope you're having a fabulous day. I hope the family as well. And thank you so much, as always. Uh, Two Face asks, look, looking forward to Ukraine, will you be going to Lviv? Probably, most likely. At first, I was actually not going to go there just because I went there the last time uh, that I shot in Ukraine. I kind of did the northwest part of Ukraine. So I'm definitely going to be doing the east this time around. But um, I have a friend that actually I want to visit in Lviv so I might actually do one video from there as well. I'm probably going to be in, in uh, Ukraine for a minimum of two to three months just because I actually have quite a few people that I want to collaborate with there and um, my friend Shifa might be even joining me there so uh, I have plenty of things that I want to do uh, in Ukraine as well as see my family so I'm actually going to be there for a couple of months. Now I wish you guys could be here with me right now because it smells so freaking delicious. And the last time I was here, I didn't know where the smell was coming from. And after I left, I read about what this delicious smell was. And right now there is not a line. So I'm going to show you guys what it is I smell. I don't know what it is, but I know what it's called. It's called gata and it's some kind of pastry. I don't know what's in it per se, but it is a specialty of Armenia. And apparently this is the main sort of place to get it. So let's get one and hope it's good. I assume it will be. Oh, I just got to get my wallet though, one sec. Oh, one sec guys. I have to point you at the ground as I get my wallet. Сейчас еще не готовы никакие или? Нет, но это быстро готовится. А, да? Хорошо. А что там внутри? Я, правда, еще не кушала такое. Начинка? Да. Называется полис. Интересно. Но слово не переводится. Особенность это топленое масло. Из-за топленого масла такое. Ага, лавкальный вор. Хавасар. 
So it's just going to be a little bit of a wait, guys. They said just a couple of minutes. But basically it is something with like melted butter and like condensed milk. So I'm excited to try it. Aw. And while we wait, thank you so much to Brianna once again for a super chat. You have surprised Alina you'll see after the stream. Thank you so much, Brianna. You are so sweet. Thank you so much. You guys are so kind. Let's see here. This place is definitely popular, as you guys can see before there was like a huge line up here. Здравствуйте. Ну, гата это как пирожное, да? Там сладкая начинка. Да, да. да. Угу. Просто одну, пожалуйста. А, через 10? Да. Хорошо, ну я тогда приду назад. Ага. Не позже только, а то закончится. <laughs> Хорошо, спасибо. All right, guys, they said it's going to be 10 minutes of a wait, but I shouldn't uh, be longer than 10 minutes because they said it might be gone by that point. So let me just take you down the Souvenir Street while we wait. Um, but yeah, it's just like a sort of pastry with a sweet filling is what he said. So I'm excited to try it because it smells so freaking good. <laughs> mm. Aw, thank you so much to Ramel. Good luck on your YouTube channel as well. Oh yeah, to piggyback on what Too Faced said, your timing on Thailand was good. Bangkok and other places are now under heavy restrictions. Yeah, for anybody who, I guess, doesn't have, you know, much news from what's happening in Thailand, like it is not good right now. Like they are having a spike like they've never had before. It was like a thousand cases when I was there. And obviously they were putting on more and more restrictions with a thousand cases a day. But last I checked, it was like 13,000 a day. Like it was bad. And you know, a lot of people dying and uh, the vaccine rollout hasn't really happened fast enough. So my heart really goes out to everybody in Thailand because it's like they're kind of going through what you know the majority of countries went through last year um, as you know these countries are getting out of it they're kind of going into it so I really hope that you know the vaccines can help them get through this because it's difficult when you have you know a population of what is it like 15 million or something in Bangkok or 13 million like crazy high population um, especially in you know, that center and lots of people living in poverty, can't exactly social distance. So really, really difficult time in uh, Thailand right now. Um, so this is the Souvenir Street. This is where I got ripped off. <laughs> Just keep in mind for you guys. I found one guy that gave me a phenomenal deal. And after seeing the same thing at other people's stalls, he definitely gave me a really good deal. So. I'm glad that I actually bought the most stuff from him, but uh, yeah, there was like a few shops in here that were quoting me like completely ridiculous prices, but for this one thing that, you know, I really wanted and I just ended up buying the last minute, the guy definitely ripped me off. So I hope he's happy with himself, <laughs> but yeah, just keep that in mind if you come here, probably just as well to Hagel unless you have a good idea of how much something is supposed to cost. There's also some stalls over here. Let me just go around and then we'll head back up to the Gata and get our pastry. Ah, thank you so much to Rakul. You're so kind. Amazing live stream. I've only seen Lake Savan in pictures, but you've inspired me to check it out in person. Question between Lake Savan, Baikal, Kulsai. Oh, you really know where I have been, Rahul. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Louise and Ohrid, which one's your favorite and why? Oh gosh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. 
I mean, they're all beautiful in their own way, all worth 100% worth visiting. Um, but from the ones you mentioned, probably Lake Baikal, just because, you know, I mean, it is so big, it is so deep, and uh, it's just, it's just got this sort of mystery around it, to be honest, and especially from Olkin Island, where I spent about five days back in my Russia trip and stuff, like, it was just, it really was next level. So I think Baikal is, like, the top for sure, but then Lake Louise also, I think, is, you know, very special with just the way that it's situated, but all of them are great. <laughs> all of them are fantastic. But thank you so much, Rahul. That is so incredibly kind of you. I really appreciate it, and uh, hope you're having a fabulous day. Uh, Yes, let me flip here, guys. So yeah, this is just the other part of the stalls. This is the parking lot that is absolutely jam-packed here on the weekends. Let's head uh, back to get my pastry, back to get this gata stuff. And actually, remind me if I forget, but there's also a homemade vodka stall that I wanted to try out with you guys um we'll see if that's still open after we get the gata but they have a whole bunch of fruit vodkas here which is something you don't really see often so we'll see if uh we can have a little shot of spirit to end off our night this is a nice restaurant actually if you guys want a restaurant suggestion for this area I went here and it was pretty good. They have a really nice view from the balcony. Oh, see, there's a line. There's a line for the gata. There was no line before because there was no gata. <laughs> oh, what is this? I don't know if this is also a part of their bakery, but interesting. hope we get some guys i don't want my whole live stream to be just like waiting for gata but i really want to taste this thing <laughs> Aw, thank you so much to david finzi for your kind comment much appreciated Okay, while we wait for my gata, um, Claudia from Brazil just commented, hello, Claudia. Uh, but speaking of Brazil, I'm considering going to South America for the winter. We'll see how things are with COVID. Um, oh shoot, I have 20% of battery. That is not good. That is not good. Hmm. Well, I can't do anything about that now. Uh, so I don't know yet if we'll be able to do the boat ride tonight then, guys. Uh, it wouldn't even last by the time I got on the boat. So let's just make our finale gata. Uh, but yeah, I was saying that uh, I'm thinking of going to South America for the winter. So if anybody has any suggestions of like things to see and do in Brazil, uh, Ecuador, Peru, which I have been to before, but would love to go again, and also Colombia, please DM me on Instagram or something, or send me an email, or I mean right on here as well, um, or also just like what is the conditions like, you know, with COVID right now, what's the safety like, all that kind of stuff, please let me know, because uh, I kind of need to go somewhere warm for the winter, and since um, Southeast Asia is basically shut down and going through waves of covid i think south america might be you know a good option 
for that before going back to Canada in like the end of spring or summer. So that is, that is my plan for the time being. Tufe Ace asks, why South America for the winter? What's the rationale? Warm weather, <laughs> that's the rationale. <laughs> Portugal or Spain, I don't think are actually that warm in the winter. I think it's still going to be like, you know, plus 15, which is fine, but it's also more expensive. So I would prefer to go somewhere, you know, super budget friendly and warm weather and somewhere I haven't also been before would be great. Thank you so much to Jim Ross at Pastries and Vodka. Are you are using are you using us to indulge yourself? Thank you so much, Jim. Yeah, I hope. Let's see, let's see how this battery lasts. It definitely has gone down a lot faster than usual. I had a full battery um, before I started my live stream and usually, you know, it definitely has like 40% left after only an hour. So it's a bit odd that it is down so much, but hopefully we can try Gata and then we'll go down and um, get some vodka if the guy's still selling it. But this is the lineup here. Everybody is waiting for this stuff. I hope I freaking get some. Imagine standing in line twice and you miss out. All right, well, while we're waiting, I'll continue to answer your questions. Um, Mr. JB asks, what about New Zealand? Uh, New Zealand is still totally shut down to tourism, so that's not even an option. Um, but definitely would like to go back to New Zealand sometime. Oh my God, am I actually gonna get one? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I agree, Daryl. They definitely need a ticket system. <laughs> so can I just reserve one, please? Oh my God, are they, are they still making them fresh, I wonder? I thought some would be ready, but oh my God, if they have to make them still fresh, isn't that gonna take a while? I'm so confused. <laughs> Jesus. Um, hmm. What do you think, guys? Should I keep waiting or what, what would you guys prefer? Do you want to see something else or do you really want me to like eat the gata? <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> Daryl says wait. <laughs> Mm. Okay, you guys want me to wait. Okay, I totally will. That's a huge piece of dough, isn't it, though? My god. And they're like weighing every single piece. <laughs> yes, yeah, stale is definitely not a problem. <laughs> well, I'm going to be coming here on a Monday tomorrow, so hopefully tomorrow I won't have to wait as long because I definitely want to film this for tomorrow as well. Oh my goodness. Еще осталось во время. Да, во Одну, пожалуйста. Пожалуйста. Спасибо. На здоровье. 
Oh my gosh, you guys. This thing is heavy. Mm, спасибо. Вам спасибо. Oh my gosh, you guys, I made it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, let me find a place to properly eat this. Hmm. Where is this guy going? Okay. You know what? I don't even care. I'm just gonna sit here on the sidewalk. This guy doesn't run over me. Maybe I should sit up higher. Okay. All right. 15% of battery, but I'll be damned. We got it, guys. We got the gata. <laughs> this thing is heavy. It is big. It costs basically a dollar. It is the size of my head and it is like piping hot. So I hope I don't burn my mouth on it. Let me just wait until this Jeep leaves so we don't have the noise in the background. Yes, David, I wish I could clone this and <laughs> give it to you guys. Oh my God, this is really hot. I really hope I don't burn myself, but let's go for it. Mm -hmm. It's good, it's good, it's good. <laughs> okay. That's what it looks like. Yeah, I think it is like, yeah, just butter and condensed milk. But it smells so good. Really light and fluffy with like an exterior sort of crispiness. <laughs> Trying to relate as much as possible to you guys. Um, yeah, really nice that it's fresh. Let me take another bite here. That's so hot. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I want to thank Alex, but my mouth is full one sec. <laughs> mm. Thank you so much to my wonderful friend Alex Wallace. I'm going to get the gotcha and a few shots of homemade vodka. Miss the sweet mastic mystic after the swim and good meal. Thank you so much, Alex. That is so sweet of you. Alex is my friend and was actually in my video when I was in Greece last year. We did that volcano tour and yeah, Greece has this like weird sort of a tasty liqueur called Mystique. So yeah, we both tried that for the first time there. So thank you so much for coming out, Alex. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're enjoying your vacation right now. Hope you are having a fabulous day. Um, but yeah, guys, I probably got like I don't know, 10 minutes left on my battery. I don't even know. So um, let me quickly make my way to the vodka place and see if he is open. And uh, <laughs> we'll end off my stream with some vodka. And then tomorrow when I film my actual Lake Savon video, which will be out in a few weeks, the boat ride will be in there and, you know, will be more aesthetically pleasing than my 780 live stream. So I apologize that we couldn't do a boat ride today, but yeah, something's just up with my battery. I think uh, maybe just, you know, Apple products a couple years old and the battery gets, um, you know, shorter and shorter over time. So I'll have to charge it right away because I still got to get out of here. I have, I can't walk home unless I'm going to walk home for like four hours. So. Hopefully my battery pack will be able to help me with that. Um, okay, let me just flip the camera. Um, so, I believe he was over here. Yeah, homemade vodka. <laughs> and they have corn everywhere in the former Soviet Union, I feel like has corn everywhere. <laughs> Здравствуйте. <laughs> 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 Это какая? Это виноградная водка, то, что цельцем на варме. Виноград вместе с этим, с 
Абрикосом. Абрикосом, значит, винократ и абрикос. А, да. интересно, хорошо. Я сейчас делаю лайвстрим и по-английски буду всем рассказывать. О, это сильно. Ну да, мягкая, не горькая или что-то, да. Да. Она и тюлевые масла, и тюлевые масла. Все чище. А как, как долго это все делается? Как, это в процессе полгода делается. Полгода, а, ого. Вода, пока она чистит. Вы мне пеки, да? А пока она чистит, пока она чистится. А в процессе это приготавливается. Ага. Вот. Да. Вот. Вот. Интересно. А вы только здесь продаете а, или? Да. Да. А, ну здесь. классно, здесь. повезло. Да. У нас продается это только. Ладно, если он с мясом. Класс. Больше ни у кого есть. Если он с мясом. А это еще виноградное вино, а если тоже я А потом виноградное, у меня есть грантовое вино, которое делает Харсон. Это за Ниги. Он грантовое вино, которое именно приготовится в таких тяжелых именно. Это профессия, приготовление идет. То, что те получают, привозят ко мне, я уже продаю. Ну, супер. Я завтра еще буду YouTube-блог снимать, я к вам опять приду. Значит, сколько за водку? Нет, я дал... Нет. Ну, как минимум 500 или у меня 1000 есть. Сколько, сколько обычно это стоит? Вообще, эти вот все. А? Ну, я не могу все в одно время. <laughs> я буду ну, ходить. Как вас зовут? Алина, а вас? Я русская. Ну, из Украины, из сейчас Украины. в Канаде живу. Да, это очень отлично. Меня зовут Латан. Как? Латан. Латан очень приятно. Латан меня зовут. Я продаю то, что вот самое, самое натуральное, самое, -самое uh -huh. чистое. Uh -huh. Здесь, то есть, грубо говоря, поево не принимается, магазины не принимаются категорически. У меня столько uh -huh. дав не было со стороны магазинов. Да. Почему вы говорите, что в магазине ну, да. не может гранатовое вино стоить 1200 граммов? Ну uh -huh. не может. Конечно, да. Это поево, горимое поево. Uh -huh. Я продаю его 3000, и мне хорошо. Я да. зарабатываю там 200 граммов на этом, и uh -huh. мне хорошо. Мне многого не надо. Да, Знаете, да. Вещи, да. All right, guys, if there's any Russians who could translate any of that, that would be fabulous. But I just want to pay this guy here. Give me a minute here. Oh, crap, I don't have anything small. Что? Я хочу вам дать вашу работу. Давайте немножко пообщаться о культуре и приготовлении. Ну, знаете, давайте я вам завтра приду, и это было бы супер, если вы будете здесь завтра. Конечно, ну, хорошо, я приду завтра, потому что я просто... Извините, еще раз ваше имя. Алина. Алина? Да. Замечательно. Спасибо. Извините, ну, просто мой облик, короче, не позволяет, чтобы я, короче, вошел в YouTube. Нет, нет. У меня зубы не золотые, короче. Без проблем. И славные Не, ну это супер. Я вам завтра приду, и мы больше пообщаемся. Много, короче, очень как бизнес моментов. Uh -huh. Когда люди хотят, вот когда люди хотят и делают, стар, стараются, некоторые, короче, нам наличие, не давят. Uh -huh. ну, ну и получился. 
Я делаю чисто. Я делаю чисто. Зачем поил? Да. Она от него сюда возьмут. Да. Она чистота, только чистота. Все. Самое чистое, самое лучшее. Да. Вот и так. Я тебе отвечаю, милая. Вот отвечаю тебе. Вот недавно, буквально 10 минут назад, приходит сюда муж и жена. Муж и жена. Чему дано? А ты вот здесь, дядя вот там. И только полосу зашли, и нам подсказали, именно к вам подойти, потому что всеми вопросами заряжаю я только я. Ну да. Всеми информациями, я как оберегент местный. Любимые вопросы делают только по людски. В отличие от некоторых. Пользуясь то турист, не турист. Да. Вы уже понимаете. Да, конечно, да. Я говорю, как есть. Да. И мне пофиг. Ну я так и надо. Так, как хочу. Да. Я делаю, я живу так, как хочу. Угу. Да. Я делаю так, как хочу. Я живу так, как хочу. И все, я делаю именно так, как хочу. Во всех отношениях. Нужно, я все, их взял, вот видите, белый дом там. Угу, да. Это дом писателя. Угу. Я их поместил там. Да. Все, пусть отдыхают, живут себе. Угу. Все да. хорошо, все отлично. А почему? Им хорошо. Ну да. Ой, извините, мне надо с кем-то здесь поговорить. Я завтра Делай приду. Да. И и вот... Что? Я в Севане, там у меня друзья, я с ними остановилась. Да. Давай, хорошая, завтра, Спасибо вам. До завтра. До свидания. He really wanted to talk. Like, I'll come back tomorrow. We'll, we'll chat tomorrow. A really nice guy. Um, okay, guys, I think I saw um, a super chat here, but that guy was super sweet and very good vodka, actually. Apricot and grape. Who would have thought? And my battery hasn't quite died, though we are on 10% there. Um, Aw, Marco, Marco Wolf, thank you so much. You are amazing. You are amazing, Marco. Thank you so much for all the time that you have supported my channel. Expect a uh, postcard from, uh, I think I, the one I sent you is from uh, one of the monasteries here in the area because you are in my Patreon club. Thank you so much. Uh, those are actually going to be sent out to everybody in the next couple of days. But thank you so much, Marco. Thank you to everybody for uh, waiting through that chat. I hope some Russians translated something about that. But basically that lovely man was saying that, you know, he makes a homemade product. It doesn't really make sense for him to, you know, sell it in stores just with the kind of, you know, like price expectations of larger companies. It's a bit harder, but he sells it here and, you know, says he gets a lot of great customers. So yeah, super sweet guy. And I'll try and interview him for the video and uh, I'll have subtitles so you guys will know what's going on. Um, let me just try and read through the many comments that you guys sent me while I was talking to him because, you know, I was paying attention to him. I didn't, uh, didn't uh, look at the comments as I was talking to him. Okay. I hope I didn't miss any super chats though, guys. I saw the one from Marco, but I think all the other ones I got back to, let me know if I didn't. But cheers to you all. Cheers to Armenia here. Cheers to being on Lake Savan and that my battery pack will allow me to get home tonight so I won't be hitchhiking. Aww. Thank you so much to Shigeru. I am still awake and enjoying your live stream. There seems to be many nice and kind people there. I love your smile, by the way. Thank you so much, Shigeru. That is so, so incredibly sweet of you. <laughs> oh, thank you once again to Veronika. I don't think I saw that one before. Thank you so much. Actually, I want some more of this. This is actually pretty tasty. I have to take my gata with me. Oh, that's strong. And uh, I go home. But let me give you guys a view here of the boats here. This is the boats that I wanted to take tonight. But actually it might be a little bit too late unless I wanted to get a private tour. During the day they fill these guys up with plenty of people. So obviously you're paying a lower price. That's what I was hoping would happen here 
tonight, but usually around this time it does slow down. So I'll just have to try and come here uh, earlier in the day tomorrow. Let me give you a little view here. Aw. Thank you so much to Alan to close off this stream. Cheers. Cheers to you, Alan. Oh, he gave me like a good three shots, keep in mind. I thought when he first said, oh, you know, I'll give you a taste or something, you know, in Canada or something like that, you'd get like, I don't know, a quarter of a shot if you were testing like hard liquor. He gives me freaking like three shots in a glass and says it's free initially. I had to pay him something. I didn't even pay him that much or whatever. You wouldn't tell me how much he charges, but I gave him a thousand from, which is about three dollars. And I think that's a fairly like normal rate for here. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, JB Greenwood. Jean, thank you so much. That is so incredibly sweet of you. Cheers to you as well. I'm just gonna drink my vodka here on Lake Savon until my battery dies. Ryan Hildebrandt, are you getting drunk on street booze? Yes, I am, Ryan. That is, that is my brand. <laughs> vodka <laughs> on the lake during a live stream. Uh, Brianna asks, is that vodka as good as Starka? Definitely better, 100% better. I'm actually usually not a vodka drinker because I don't like the aftertaste of most vodka, just drinking it straight. Like I see no fun of just, you know, something completely burning down my throat. But uh, this is actually quite nice. I'm actually enjoying this because it does have that smoothness, like he said of uh, grape and apricot and it, uh, it's definitely going down easier than your <laughs> original can't talk already original kinds of vodka oh let me go over here give you guys a different view Lane, my friend Lane is here. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I'm so excited all of you are here today. Thank you so much for coming out, lovely. You pours the shot like my Ukrainian uncle. Yes, Ukrainians tend to do that. Don't tell me what to do, Ryan. I have my gata. I'll be all right. Oh. I've got some Russian rap, I think. I don't know if this will catch copyright, but it is what it is. Yep, that's Russian rap. So this is it, guys. This is summer in Armenia at Lake Sevan. <laughs> and actually, I'm just going to go all the way down to the end of my battery here why not it's just gonna cut out at some point so if i cut out i love you all thank you so much for all of your support many videos to come and i'll probably try and actually do one more live stream here in armenia before i leave in about a month but uh while we still have battery let me actually show you this one other area here where very common and all kinds of Eastern European countries as well, where they kind of have this park area where you have like barbecues and stuff and these kind of weird, I don't know, trailer houses. I'll show them to you in a sec. More Soviet rides over here. If you guys saw my Gumri video, look at this bad boy. Actually, why not? Why not? You only live once. Oh. I tried to sit down and my ass doesn't sit. <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> I know it's for children, but I'm still offended. My ass is not that big. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not squeezing into that. That's unfortunate. I was so excited. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> that's out of the question. <laughs> All right, so yeah, this is the part that I wanted to show you guys. These are just kind of like the picnic tables uh, that you can relax at. There's a little 
sort of restaurant over here. <laughs> and then these are the little like trailer houses and these are all over uh, Savon. I think they are for rent. I don't think any, well, maybe some people own theirs or whatever, but I think they rent out these sort of like trailers all on the shores of the lake and stuff. There's areas, you know, near the beach where there's like a whole campground of them. I guess kind of like a trailer park, you could say. But they are just, you know, less expensive sort of summer homes that, uh, you know, are just an easy sort of thing to do. There's a whole family gathering over there. I'm not going to disturb them. Um, but yeah, that is... Uh, <laughs> That's my evening of uh, wandering around Lake Savon. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, cheers to everyone who came out. I am incredibly grateful to have such an amazing, supportive community. And I hope, you know, actually one of my goals with my channel is once COVID passes and all that kind of stuff, I wouldn't mind actually, you know, maybe formulating some kind of group tours to a destination that I know really well. And then, you know, whoever wants to come out of, you know, my subscribers can and we can travel together for a week or two or something. A lot of people have suggested that I should do that sort of thing. But, you know, that's a level of organization that I haven't ever done before. So let me know if you would like me to organize vodka tours in Armenia or Ukraine or something like that and uh, yeah might be a fun thing to do but thank you guys so much quick super chat there from Malta network resources in Maltese Alina means for us interesting interesting I can be okay with that uh, thank you so much to uh, Malta network services for the super chat greatly appreciated Malta is definitely another place that I need to go at some point in time. But yeah, guys, I am going to head out before this thing completely dies and uh, hopefully get back to my guest host before nightfall. So sending you guys so much love. Thank you for coming out. New video will be coming out not Monday, but on Thursday. Um, oh, I missed Jim's super chat. Thank you so much, Keith. We will not miss... Jim's super chat. Let me see here. How did I miss that? So sorry, Jim. I see it now. Hope that tomorrow you get a good dose of healthy vodka and this covers it. Fruit flavors, so it must be healthy. Like Saskatchewan Moonshine. Thanks for this. Yes, exactly. There is fruit in here, guys. There's grapes and apricots. Since there's three shots, it's basically like three servings of fruit, I would say. So you could say I'm a health influencer, so... Cheers to that. Thank you guys so much. Hope I didn't miss any other super chats. Let's just see here quickly. Nope, I think we're doing all right. Send you guys lots of love. Cheers and good night.